It's not about your qualifications. It's not about your mantras. It's not about any of that really. It's about the innocent desire to just be there without any sense of getting at all. Somehow the universe loves you when you have that naive, simple innocence about you, like a child. we have the expression in English, uh, the meek shall inherit the earth. It doesn't mean the disempowered, poverty-stricken, powerless people at all. The meek are the truly uh, transparently clear, simple people who've got nothing to hide. This is a, a version of a popular belief called the Law of Attraction. Yeah. How, I, tell me your version of that. Uh, I would say that the Law of Attraction is uh, an ancient idea, of course. It's a very ancient idea. Like attracts like. Uh, vibration attracts vibration. Uh, thoughts form the basis of everything in our world. Everything in the room we're sitting in right now uh, started up as a thought. Uh, the light, the camera, the TV. One day, one person had one thought that goes, a TV, maybe I'll invent that. They probably didn't even think, I'll invent that. It was something transfers images from room to room. Right? It started as a thought, right? And because of the passion for John Logie Baird, who was the guy who invented the television, he was a Scotsman. John Logie Baird had the thought, I wonder if I could do that. That thought attracted to him the money, the technology, the, the research team, everything. But he had never heard of the law of attraction. So he wasn't consciously using the law of attraction. What he was doing though, was having an enduring passion, an enduring passion with a single focus. But for John Craig, Napoleon Hill's book, that simple little book, Oh, took yeah. a gardener to an oh, international yeah. businessman who had a thought that he'd like to meet Gorbachev. Yeah, yeah. Tell me. Yeah, Napoleon Hill did his research. He really did. And don't forget that Napoleon Hill's teacher was Andrew Carnegie, who was a Scotsman born in the same town as my mother. And, and Napoleon Hill learned all the secrets of the great capitalist, right? And in this day and age, 21st century, Napoleon Hill is kind of uncool because it's capitalism. It's about me becoming the king of the world and gaining. That, that doesn't matter. He was a product of his age, right? He was simply a product of his age. But his philosophy, Napoleon Hill's philosophy, was ancient. Everybody has always known that what you think becomes manifest in your quote-unquote reality. That's science. So nobody can argue with the law of attraction, really. It works, but it does have some tricky bits to it. And I think I alluded to that when I said the key to meeting Gorbachev was not that I sat down every day with a photograph of him and went, I want to meet Gorbachev, I want to meet Gorbachev, I want to meet Gorbachev. That I don't think would have worked. And one day I was in Kyoto where they have an international conference hall, a world-class conference hall. And remember, the global warming thing all started in Kyoto because the Kyoto Protocols happened after the Rio Summit. The very first uh, environmental conference on the world was the Rio Summit. Subsequently, the Kyoto Protocols were founded saying, we need to do stuff from now on and have regular meetings about this. So an organization called the Green Cross was founded, the Red Cross for the Earth, the Green Cross and its head was going to be Mikhail Gorbachev and the Dalai Lama and Mikhail Gorbachev and world leaders were going to descend upon Kyoto literally 10 minutes from where I lived and uh, I just went oh Mikhail Gorbachev is cool I mean I'm not a political person really but I recognized just as Margaret Thatcher recognized this guy's different he's got something he's got some kind of charisma so uh, I went to the conference hall and said I'll be a volunteer interpreter 
All I want to do is be a volunteer interpreter. But in my heart, I was going, if only I could be in a room with that Mikhail Gorbachev, I'll do anything. And if you were to ask me, well, what did that look like? It would be a room with 10,000 people in it, just sitting at the back, you know, and there he is on the real Mikhail Gorbachev. Whoa! But what actually happened is that uh, through sheer uh, synchronicity, I ended up as his press manager's interpreter because I had the badge. And just at the moment when the press interp the press liaison for Gorbachev, who was an American, uh, who was very, very uh, uppity guy, whose previous his previous client had been Elizabeth Taylor. So this guy worked with real high high profile people as the press manager, and suddenly he comes to Kyoto and he says, I'm the press manager for Mikhail Gorbachev. And he assumed that all Japanese journalists speak English. Big mistake. So he walked into a press conference, started speaking English, and all going, what? And then he went, you guys don't speak English? And he came out of the room with his hair on fire because Gorbachev was about to arrive at the International Conference Hall. And he came out of the room and he went, Ooh. and he saw me walking towards him with a big sign here saying, volunteer interpreter, and he literally grabbed me and said, now, I need you. And then he said, come with me, come with me. And I said, what, 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 what? He said, I'm Gorbachev, press secretary. I didn't know these guys couldn't speak Japanese. I don't know what the hell to do here. I need you. You've got to translate between me and Gorbachev and the, the, the press corps. Said, Literally two minutes later, I'm standing at the front of the entrance to the International Conference Hall. And the limo arrives and all of the guards and everything. And out steps Gorby and comes straight at the guy. Because he's his press li liaison. He's the first guy he needs to get together with, right? And I'm standing next to the world leader. Oh, this is really bizarre because how many people would want to be standing here right now? How many people would have sent money and letters and donations just to be standing here? I didn't do anything except think, I'd love to be in a room with that guy. I ended up in a room with that amazing guy alone just the two of us. Now that is beyond any kind of serendipity, accidental. I had asked to be in the same room as him, but I had not specified alone. I'd imagine thousands of people. And because of a mess up by a KGB agent who was late for work, right, who should have been with him at all times, he walked into a room at the Palace Hotel in Kyoto, where he was staying. Uh, and I had no reason to be in that room except to be sure that he was taken to meet the Japanese reporter who was waiting for him in the back room. That was my only function. But since I was sitting there in the room when he came in, he immediately thought he must be here for a reason. A major world leader had walked into a room unguarded where an unknown guy who's had no security checks once and uh, because he's used to my face after three days, he comes up and shakes my hand and said, Good morning, how are you? Right? Like, Good morning, sir, how are you? And then, just after that interchange, only two guys in the room happened. In walks the KGB agent, flustered, sweating, with a big bulge here where his gun was, right? Late for work. Probably going to get fired from the KGB. And all of this had unfolded? Are you kidding me? because of the law of something. <laughs>For me, it's a great story of, it's not about your qualifications, it's not about your mantras, it's not about any of that really. It's about the innocent desire to just be there without any sense of getting at all. Somehow the universe loves you when you have that naive, simple innocence about you, like a child.